Welcome to the John Gets Games tutorial for Prairie Railroads. In this video, I'll be teaching you the rules to the game as it's being played, and I will be showing you about half of a game today. Now, before I go into that, I do want to ask that if you enjoyed this video, that you please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. In addition to that, if you'd like to directly support the channel and get access to a ton of exclusive perks, then please go to patreon.com slash John Gets Games. Some of those perks include getting access to my dozens of opinions episodes, where I've talked about the hundreds of games that I played over the last few years with the things I like and don't like about them, as well as giving updates as I continue to play them. You can also watch some videos early and advertisement free and get access to an exclusive podcast feed where you can hear audio versions of all of my vlogs, including those opinions episodes I just mentioned. Now, coming back to this game, I do want to ask that if while you're watching this, some part of it jumps out to you as particularly interesting, then please comment about that down below. All right, let's jump into the game. Out here, we have the game fully set up and ready to play for our four different players. Now, before I start, I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles. I might make mistakes as I'm showing you the game, and those will let me put corrections on the screen where you should be able to see them, and I will also put corrections below this video in the top comment. Well, let's start things off with a brief overview of the game. In it, each player is an investor buying stocks in various railroads that are building from America's eastern coast out west because the Great Plains are where cattle, wheat, and other crops are being grown in abundance and there is a lot of money to be made transporting those goods back to the east. Now, the way the game works is we will start with an initial auction where players spend their money into the treasuries of these companies to buy one of each of their stocks. Then we'll start playing the game, and on a player's turn, they can either play one of these cards in their hand, which let them either construct track, offer up stocks, or pay dividends, or the player can draw the top card from this shuffled up deck, which has construct track, offer stock, and pay dividends cards in it. Whatever card is flipped up is the action that is done. So essentially, you control what the action is or you go random, but this is a predefined limited set of cards. Once you've spent all of these on your turns, you must draw randomly from the top of the deck, and you are allowed to draw from here even if you have cards in your hand. When we construct track, we are going to spend money out of the treasuries of these railroads to place their cubes down onto this map, which will increase that railroad's income. Now, before cubes are even placed when constructing, we are going to grow a random city. We'll roll this die twice, which will give us a two-digit number, and then we'll find the associated city and then develop it, putting one of these cubes on top of it, and this increases the income for all railroad cubes that are connected to that city. The next action is offering stock, where the active player chooses any one of these companies with a share. They put that share up for auction and bid on it. The auction will then proceed clockwise, and once all but one person passes, that person pays their bid into the treasury of that company and then takes that stock. Now, the reason you want stocks is because they allow you to build these companies, and when dividends get paid out, players will get one-fifth of the income value for each of their stocks in these companies. So, as you invest in companies, you would like to lay track out to increase the income to increase the payouts you get for the stocks that you have already paid for. Now, each player only has one of these pay dividends cards, so we can choose when one of these happens, but there are four of them in this draw deck, which could randomly happen when players decide to draw from it. The last thing to say is that there is extra value in building track to the west. You can only do this once you are connected to one of these leftmost positions. You have to spend a significant amount of money out of that railroad's treasury, but then you put a cube down, and only that railroad pays out dividends once again for the stocks that people have in that specific railroad. Now we're going to keep playing the game until eight railroad cards have been played, or until any player cannot play any cards because they don't have any in their hand, and this draw deck is gone. At that point, we will do one final dividend, and this one is a bit different. You add the income to the value of the companies, which has to do with the cubes on the board, and then you divide it by the number of stocks held, you get that payout per stock, and then whoever has the most money wins the game. Now, I will describe how all of this works in detail while we are playing the game, and on that note, it's now time for us to start. For today's tutorial, we are going to play as the purple player up here, and the first thing that we do is an initial auction. In this step, we're going to auction off one stock in each of the six companies, and we will move from the left to the right. This means we start an auction for a stock in the black company. Next up, we randomly pick a player to be the start player. You can use this D6 die over there for that, and in this case, I've decided that randomly, we are the first player. This means we have the first opportunity to bid on that stock, and we can bid zero, but that is effectively a pass. And once you pass, you can no longer bid in that specific auction for that stock. Now, with a four-player game, each of us begins with $70, and I think we'll start the bid at $25. 
After that, it's Green's turn. They can pass, which means they're out of this auction, or they can increase the bid by at least $1. They've decided to stay in, and they'll actually jump up to $30. Now Yellow can go, and they're going to pass, which means Blue can go, and they're going to say $35. Again, you can bid just $1 more, but there are reasons to spend money in $5 increments, and I'll get to that when I discuss constructing track. So it's $35 coming back to us, and I think we'll pass on that. This means $35 now goes to the green player, and they'll say 40. Now it goes to blue, and they're going to pass. This means everyone has passed except green, so they can spend their $40 bid, first making some change. And that money goes into the Black Railroad's treasury. After this, the green player does take that stock, and then they place the first track down for that company at no cost. Now, each of these companies has different potential starting positions. For the Black Railroad, they must build out of Troy. As you can see, there are two different options coming out of Troy, and that means that the green player can decide to put this track here or there. As you can see, track is always laid between two cities. For now, they've decided to pick this spot going from Troy to Whiting, and now the Black Railroad's income will increase by the value of each of the connected cities. Now, this green triangle for all of the starting cities is worth zero income, but we can see here there is a diamond shape. Out on the board, there are specifically diamonds, squares, and hexagons. The hexagons increase the income by the number shown, the diamonds increase the income by one, and the squares increase the income by two. There's a player aid for this on the board, and as you can see, if a city becomes developed, its income increases by one, and I'll explain how we grow into developed cities during the first construct track action of the game. Once again, that's zero plus one, so the black company's starting income is one. We show that on this track here so that we don't have to keep computing what our income is as these cubes are placed onto the board. That finishes the first out of six initial auctions. The next share to be auctioned off is for the Blue Railroad. The initial bidder for this auction is going to be the player who won the previous auction. That is the green player, so they can now bid on blue. They have $30 remaining. I think they're just going to pass. This means yellow now gets to bid and they jump right up to $30. Now blue can go, and they'll just say 31. Now it's over to us, and I like the look of this blue railroad's starting position. Let's increase the bid up to 40. I think we'll just jump right up to that. Green has already passed, so it's now over to yellow, and they'll say 41. Now blue can go, and they say 42. We are up again, and instead of 43, let's just go to 45. That is a lot of our money, but I think it's worth it. So we'll say 45. It now goes to yellow, and it's too rich for their blood. They're going to pass, and blue passes as well. It's possible we just overpaid for this, but let's give it a go. This means we put $45 into the blue railroad's treasury. Then we take that blue stock, and we can place the first blue track down. Much like the Black Railroad, Blue only has one city starting option, and in fact, we don't have a choice. We have to go from Atkinson down here to Topeka. As you can see, Topeka has an income of four printed on it, so the Blue Railroad's starting income is four. We'll put the tracker onto the four position, and as you can see, that's a lot better than the Black Railroad's starting position. Again, this is the reason why we pushed so hard for this, and hopefully that wasn't a mistake for us. All right, the next auction is for this brown railroad stock. We start the auction, and sure, let's just say $25. That's all of our remaining money. Green is up next, and they'll say $30, which is all of their remaining money. And then it's yellow's turn. They'll say 31. Now blue gets to go, and they'll say 35. Now we have to pass, and so does green, because we cannot afford to increase our bids. And now yellow increases the bid to 40. Blue passes on that. So, the yellow company wins it for 40. And now they have a decision to make with this starting track for the Brown Railroad. As you can see, it can start from Levensworth or Kansas City. These circles not only have the railroad's color around them, but they also have the icon for that railroad. The Brown Railroad happens to be Kansas and Pacific. So, they can start from Levensworth going to Lawrence, or they can go from Kansas City to Lawrence or Kansas City down to Ottawa. They're going to go with this one, Kansas City to Ottawa. That is a square, which adds two to the income. Again, this triangle adds zero, so the Brown Railroad's income starts at two. Moving on, we now have a share of the Yellow Railroad to auction off. The Yellow player begins this, and they'll say 30. That's all of their money. Now it goes to the Blue player, and they can see that their opponents have 30 30 and $25. So Blue is just going to bid $31 and win this outright because nobody can afford to outbid them. So they win the stock. 
and then they put $31 into the Yellow Railroad's treasury. The blue player now constructs the first Yellow Railroad track. As you can see, it can begin out of Kansas City, Paola, or Fort Scott. I think they've decided to build out of Fort Scott. Paola would have given them a quick route over to Topeka, but it looks like maybe their plan is to head more in the south. We'll just have to see. They could certainly head up as well to Topeka from that angle, as long as it's not blocked. And again, I'll talk about the construct track action soon. That connection adds 0 plus 2 to the Yellow Railroad's income, so it begins at 2. All right, the auctions continue with the first stock of the Red Railroad, and Blue begins this, and we've all spent quite a bit of money so far. The Blue player still has $39 compared to the 30, 30, and 25 of the rest of us. Maybe we spent too much. We'll just have to see how it goes as the game proceeds. Blue again begins this. They could buy this stock for $31, and I think that's what they're going to do. And now that they've paid into the treasury, they have to construct the first track for the Red Railroad that can come out of Paola, Fort Scott, Girard, or Columbus. They're going to head all the way down here connecting Columbus to Coffeeville. That's zero plus two income, which means the Red Railroad also begins with an income of two. And now it's time for the final initial auction, this for a green railroad stock. And once again, Blue starts this, but they only have $8 left, and they'll bid $8 which is obviously going to be outbid. We will say $25. Unfortunately, two of our opponents have more money than that, though. And the green player has decided they'll bid $30, which ends the auction, because, of course, the yellow cannot outbid them. So $30 goes into the treasury for the green railroad. And then the green player can place this initial track. And as you can see, the green railroad can start in every one of the beginning cities. Of course, it has to go into a link that's not already occupied but there are still a bunch of options available. They've decided to go here. That connects Paola to Ottawa, and it increases the income by 0 plus 2. So the Green Railroad also begins with an income of 2. At this point, all of the initial auctions are done, so now we can move into the main game. The way this works is we start with the player who won the initial auction for the Green, Missouri, and Pacific Railroad. That is the green player over here, so they now take the first turn of the game. Now, on a player's turn, they either select one action card from their hand, place it here, and do what it says, or they randomly draw the top card from this shuffled deck, put it into the used cards area, and do what it says. The cards within this deck are the same variety as those in our hands. However, some of the actions perform differently when chosen from a player's hand versus being drawn from the top of the deck, and I'll explain those as we go on. In this case, the green player has decided to start by playing a Construct Track card from their hand into the used cards area. Now, every time a Construct Track card is played either from a player's hand or from the top of the draw deck, the first thing that player has to do is discover growth. The way this works is they roll this D6 die twice. The first number is 5, and the second number is 2. That means they find number 52 over here. Again, the first number being the first roll and the second number being the second. And that is right over here. Now, as you can see, there is a primary and secondary option. And the way this works is if the primary city has not been developed yet, then it gets developed. However, if it was already developed, then we go to the secondary city and we develop that. If 52 is rolled and both Junction City and Hugoton have been developed, then this player can develop any primary city that has not been developed already. If somehow every primary city has been developed, then they would choose a secondary city that has not been developed. Now, this is the first discover growth of the game, which means nothing is developed, so Junction City now gets developed. We can see here there's a helpful reminder that Junction City can be found in position C7 on the map. So we find C and 7, and that means Junction City is right around here. In fact, it's right there. Now, as you can see, the square and diamond positions both have the dimensions that allow a cube to be placed. So we take a development cube from the supply, and we place it onto that city. What this means is Junction City is developed, and developed cities are worth one more income than normal. Junction City is now worth three income for each cube that is connected to it. After discovering growth, the active player now chooses a railroad to construct track. Now, if they control a railroad, they can construct track with it, and a player controls a railroad if they have the majority of stocks in that railroad or tied for the majority. In this case, the green player has the majority for the black and green railroads, so they have to choose one of those. Now, I do want to mention that if the current player did not control any companies with their stocks, then they'd have to choose any of the six railroads. 
even if they don't have stock in it, and the player who does control that railroad gets to perform a construct track action, even though it would not actually be their turn. This is not the case right now, though, and the green player has decided to construct track for the green railroad. This means they're going to place one or two cubes down onto the map, and they have three options to choose from. The first option is they place a single cube, and then they spend $5 out of that railroad's treasury. The second option is they place two cubes down, but now they have to spend $15, so essentially $7.5 per cube as opposed to $5 per cube when one cube is placed. And then the third option does still involve placing one cube, but specifically that cube goes west onto one of these black icon W spots as long as that railroad is already connected to this city here. Going west can be very expensive. The first time it happens costs $15, the second time costs $20, and so on. And I'll explain the details of going west later on in the tutorial, because obviously no company is remotely close to doing that yet. So let's focus back over here, and the green player has decided to place two cubes down for the green railroad. The first cube is going to go here, and every time a cube is placed, it must connect to a city that was already connected for that company. So this first cube would have to go onto any of these options, and they've decided to go here. That connects Ottawa up to Topeka. With their second cube placement, they're going to go here, connecting Topeka up to Manhattan. Now, when you place two cubes down, there are two extra restrictions. The first is that the second cube must connect to the city that the first cube connected to. Essentially, you have to place these cubes out in a line. You are not allowed to fork with the cubes placed. The other restriction is the city that is now connected by the second cube cannot already be connected with that railroad. Manhattan is obviously not connected to the Green Railroad yet, so this is a legal play. After putting these cubes down, they do have to pay for it. Remember, two cubes played for one construct action costs $15 out of that railroad's treasury. The Green Railroad had $30, so now it has $15 remaining. Finally, we now have to update the income for the railroad that just constructed. Remember, every cube placed is going to increase the income for both of the cities that it is adjacent to. The squares increase income by two, and the diamonds increase by one, and the hexagons increase by the number in the middle. So this cube adds four plus two, or six income, and then we add the income for this cube. It is also connected to Topeka, so that's four plus another two for the square at Manhattan, so that is an additional six income, and that means this expensive track lay increased the income for the Green Railroad by 12 total. So the Green Railroad jumps from two all the way up to 14 income. Well, that finishes the Green Player's turn, but the last thing I do want to say about the Construct Track action is that if it was pulled from the top of this deck randomly, it behaves the same way we've seen already, except the active player can only choose to place a single cube down onto the board, and they cannot go west with that cube, and they cannot place two cubes down. So that is the difference between going from the draw deck or going from the player's hands. At this point, with Green done, play now moves clockwise to the yellow player. They've decided to play a card from their hand, and this is an offer stock action. They put that into the used cards pile, and now they can choose any stock that is still unsold and start an auction for it. They've decided to start with an auction for a green railroad stock. Next up, the current player, who is yellow, will start this auction, and the minimum initial bid is going to be the value of that company divided by five. Now the value of each company is $5 for every cube that's placed on the board. The green company has three cubes placed on the board, so its value is currently 15. When you divide that by five, that means the minimum value for this stock is three. Essentially, you could just count the cubes on the board and the number of cubes out there is going to be the minimum bid for that stock. Now there is one extra wrinkle when it comes to calculating value, and that is that if the company has gone west, which means there's a cube on one of these W's, then that cube adds 25 more dollars to the overall value of that company. But once again, I don't think any company is going to be going west anytime soon. Now that minimum is actually the minimum to successfully take a stock. The yellow player doesn't have to bid that. They could just bid zero if they wanted to. But if it goes all the way around and no player has reached a bid equal to the minimum, then the stock is placed back into the supply and that player's turn is done. Effectively, they would have just spent an offer stock card in order to do nothing. Now yellow could bid 26, which would buy the stock automatically because we could not outbid them, but they think that would be foolish. They're actually going to bid 15. The blue player has to pass, and then it comes to us, so we could bid 16 if we wanted to, 
but I think we'll pass. Yeah, we'll let this one ride. So that means the yellow player buys this stock for the relatively low price of 15. And of course, they pay that money into the treasury of the Green Railroad. That finishes the offer stock action, but I do want to point out that if this action came randomly drawn from the top of the deck, then it works much the same way except the stock that is chosen has to be from the company that has the most or tied for the most stocks still in the market. Now there is one other option to perform with the offer stock action that we did not see yellow do. If you play the card from your hand, instead of offering a stock from the market, you can offer a stock that you already own. You cannot bid on your own stock, and once you start the auction for any stock, you cannot rescind it. And if somebody else bids and wins that stock, then they pay you instead of paying the bank, and then of course they take that stock. And when a card is revealed from the top of the deck, you cannot offer your own stock. Again, it must be from one of the companies that has the most stocks still in its treasury. All right, yellow is done, which means the blue player can go and they are going to construct track from their hand. They, of course, begin by discovering growth. That is going to be in the city at 43. The primary city is Russell at position C4, and it is not developed already, which means it gets developed now. Now the blue player can construct track for a railroad they control. They control yellow and red, and they've decided to lay track for the red railroad. They're going to put two cubes down. The first one will go here, connecting Coffeeville to Sedan, and the second cube will go there, connecting Sedan to Winfield. That increases the income by one, two, three, then four, five, six. So the Red Railroad's income goes up to eight. That's nowhere near as good as the Green Railroad for the same amount of money, but I think the blue player has a plan. For now, the Red Railroad has $16 remaining in its treasury. Blue is done, which means we can now take our first turn of the game. Now with that in mind, let's take a look at this hand of cards that we got at the beginning. Everyone started with the same hand of 14 cards, and in it, we have a single pay dividends card, then we have five of these offer stock cards, and then eight of these construct track cards. Now I like the idea of constructing track, but I think let's offer stock on our turn. When it comes to our opponent's treasuries, yellow has $15 and the blue player has eight. So I think what we'll do is offer up another one of these blue shares and we are going to bid 15 and we'll just win it because of course none of our opponents can outbid that. So we'll spend $15 and that will go into the blue railroad's treasury. We still have $10 remaining, nice. This does mean that the yellow player could offer stock and win one for $11, but they might want to focus on actually increasing the value of the portfolio they already have. We'll just have to see what they do when we get there. For now, the green player is up and they have no money. Now they could put a pay dividend card down, but each of us has only one of those. And even though they have no money, I think they want to get a bit more money before that happens. Yeah, they are going to play a construct track card from their hand and then discover growth. That was a six and a two. So Newton will be developed. That's at position E6, which is right over here. Now green can lay track for the green or black railroads. The yellow player has a stock in green, so I think the green player would rather lay track for the black railroad that nobody else is currently invested in. Much like the other construct track actions we've seen already, they're gonna begin by putting two cubes down. Now with this, they do have a choice. They could connect Whiting to Topeka or Troy up to Marysville. They're going to connect Whiting to Topeka, though. That offers a lot more income. And I do want to point out that some of the routes have arrows on them. That means you can only construct in that specific direction. So as you can see, now that they're going to play another cube down, they cannot go here connecting Topeka up to Lawrence because that would be going in the wrong direction compared to that arrow. Instead, they are going to connect Topeka up to Council Grove. That's a bit of a bummer. I was hoping to do that with the Blue Railroad, but we decided to offer stock instead. Maybe that was a mistake. For now though, the Black Railroad does have to spend $15, which it can easily afford. And then its income will increase by four, five, nine, ten. 10. This brings it up to 11, and the green player's portfolio is looking better than the rest of us at this point. All right, green is done, so yellow can go. And I don't think anyone's surprised to see more construct track actions being performed. They start by discovering growth. That's two and a one. 21 is here. Marysville at a seven. Okay. That could change some plans. 
Now yellow can construct track for green or brown. They're tied for the majority of green stocks, which means they do still technically control it. They're going to construct with brown, though, and place two cubes down for $15. Brown is currently connected to Ottawa, and they're going to connect Ottawa up to Emporia, and then I think go back over here to Topeka. That costs $15, which means the brown company still has $25 remaining. And then the income for the Brown Railroad goes up by 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That means Brown is up to 12. Okay, yellow is done, which means blue can go. And they are going to construct a track as well. Each of us has invested a lot of money in these companies. It makes sense that we are primarily laying track at this point to try and increase the income of our portfolio to get more money when somebody decides to perform a dividend action. Constructing track begins by discovering. That is going to be 11. That is Selena at C6. C6 means it's here. Wow, that's a lot of development all in the same area. I think that's certainly going to change some plans, probably funneling a lot of attention into this central area. Now Blue chooses a company to construct track with, and they control both yellow and red. They've already built with red, though, and they're going to pick it again. The Yellow Railroad certainly needs some help, but the Red Railroad is in a position to vastly increase its income, and on the off chance one of their opponents decides to do an early dividend action, the blue player wants to make sure they capitalize on this proximity. Now, they could put two cubes down, but the Red Railroad has $16 in its treasury, so it would go down to one and not get any more money until another red stock was purchased. And at this point, players don't have that much money. So if somebody was to buy a cheap red stock, then that means the Red Railroad isn't getting that much money to construct future track. It is tempting for them to put two cubes down on Wichita. That would increase their income by 14, but I think they've decided to try and be patient. They're going to put one cube here. They're following the arrow, as you can see, and that increases the Red Railroad's income by 5 plus 2, and it only costs $5 out of the Red Railroad's treasury. Going slow like this means they're going to get a lot more track down for the money in that treasury. Of course, it also means that they're going slow, so the income is not increasing as quickly. As I said, the income is increased by 7, so this does still put the Red Railroad in the lead on that income track. Alright, blue is done, which means we can go, and I think we should absolutely construct some track. We have to discover first, and the town getting developed is going to be 15. That is Beloit at B5. That is here. Wow, even more development up in the north. And now the only railroad we can construct track with is blue, and of course, that is absolutely what we want to do. The blue railroad has a bunch of money, specifically our money that we invested in it, so I think we should jump on these opportunities and put two cubes down. Now the blue railroad can currently only build out of Topeka, and we only have one choice. We cannot go against this arrow down to Lawrence. So we'll connect Topeka up to Duluth, and then Duluth over to Marysville. Marysville has been developed, and it was a square, so it started out at 2, and it became a 3 income because of that development, so this is going to be 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 plus 4 is 13 income, and then the Blue Railroad has to spend $15. I strongly suspect we are going to be constructing track for a few turns in the future. That's a lot of money that we can spend. All right. We are done, which means green can go. They've decided they're going to construct track. And growth is discovered at 16. We're rolling really low right now. That's Iola at E9. And that is great for the yellow company. This development cube goes down, and we do have to check if there are any cubes adjacent to a recently developed city. The Yellow Railroad is connected once, so the Yellow Railroad's income increases by one retroactively. I am genuinely surprised we haven't been seeing development out here, although the cities are much denser in the east, so it's more likely that those will be developed. Now Green is going to construct track with the Black Railroad, and they've decided to slow things down. They could go here, connecting Junction City to Council Grove, that would increase the income by 4. But instead, they're going to connect Council Grove over to Harrington. That only increases income by 3, but it appears they have a plan for the future. They, of course, spend $5 out of that treasury, which means the Black Railroad still has $20 left in it. And then its income increases by 3. Green is done, so yellow gets to go. And they've decided to construct track. Discovering growth starts. That's going to be a 5 and a 1. 51 is Kingman at F5. 
that is here. And this area is definitely starting to get a lot more incentivized. Now Yellow constructs track with the Brown Railroad, and they are going to do a double track placement. With this, they'll connect Emporia up to Cottonwood Falls and Cottonwood Falls down to El Dorado. That increases the income by one, two, three, four, five, six. Six brings it all the way up to 18. Of course, this does cost $15. So the Brown Railroad has $10 remaining. Well, yellow is done, so blue gets to go. And constructing track is going to continue. Again, it's not too surprising. This is the primary action that we are seeing right now. We all start with eight of these cards in our hand, and we're building up the value of our portfolio. Of course, every time we play one from our hand, that is one less that we can guarantee to play. At some point, we're going to start wanting to draw from this deck, but it makes sense that that would be a later game decision. All right, discovering growth happens. That is a 25. This will develop Dodge City at F3. That is... Here, it's the westernmost development that we've seen so far, and now blue is going to continue to ignore yellow. They are going to construct with the red railroad. There's only $11 in that treasury, though, so they cannot do a double build. They are going to build out of Wichita over here, connecting Wichita to Kingman. That is an upgraded square, so that adds 3 plus 5, or 8 income, which jumps the red railroad's income all the way up to 23 at the low cost of $5. They are done, so we get to go. And I think we absolutely need to keep constructing with blue. It is in danger of being completely locked out based off of how things are going because we started out pretty slow with it. So let's construct track. It looks like we have six of those remaining in our hand. And we begin with growth. 64 is here. Great bend at D5. That is here. And now let's construct two track for blue. Now we have some options, although all of them are going to originate at Marysville. And part of me wants to head down here. But again, I am worried that another company could come in and start to block us. Although Manhattan does give us quite a few options. We could also just head out west. There is one development over there. We could also maybe try to start heading down towards Wichita, but that might be out of our reach with that blue railroad. There are lots of other railroads much closer, and they are obviously angling to get to Wichita sooner than we could get there, which means there might not be any openings for us by the time we do get there. And this does feel like a pivotal moment for the blue railroad. There might be better short-term gains down here, but also lots of ways that other railroads could block us. I think because of that, let's connect Marysville up to Cuba and then connect that down to Concordia. This increases our income by three, four, five, six. Certainly not great for spending $15, but again, it gets us into our own area where maybe we can start being more efficient with our track lays now that we certainly can't be easily blocked. It's also entirely possible that this is a bad plan. Hopefully it works out for us. The blue company does still have $30 remaining, so we could do two more double track lays instead of going slow. We'll just have to make that decision later on. As I said, that increased the income by 6, bringing blue up to 19. It's now time for green to go. And they've decided to construct track. Discovering growth will happen at 51. That is Kingman at F5. We have actually developed F5 already. We rolled 51 earlier. That means we now look to the secondary target. This is Mankato at A5. A5 is here. Ooh, that's really close to our blue track. I like it. Now green is going to construct with the Black Railroad. And they are going to continue going slowly. They'll spend $5 out of its treasury to go here, connecting Harrington down to Marion. That increases the income by 2 plus 1 or 3. So Black's income is up to 17. And I know we haven't actually seen the use of this income yet. That will happen when dividends happen. And it wouldn't surprise me if the first dividend comes relatively soon. Now yellow can go, and they've decided not to construct. Instead, they are going to offer stock. They can see that the blue player has been putting a bunch of effort into that red railroad, and because of that, they are going to put this red railroad up for auction, and they are going to buy it immediately, spending $11. That's one more than what we have, so nobody else can compete with them for that. $11 goes into the red railroad's treasury. And yellow has $4 left and three stocks. 
All right, they're done, which means the blue player can go. They're a little bummed about that. They've been pushing red very hard, and yellow just swooped in and was able to take advantage of that. Blue is going to construct track, although it's unlikely to be red at this point, I think. And they start by discovering... Oh, wow, Selena again. That's happened already, so that means Belvedere gets developed. That's at F4, right here. Now Blue is going to construct with the Yellow Railroad. They could construct Red, but of course, that would just be helping out the Yellow player as much as themselves. So they'll construct with the Yellow Railroad, and it has quite a bit of money. They're going to put two cubes down. Now they have to start from Iola, which they're pretty happy about considering it's been developed. And they think Yellow really needs to start making its way west. They're going to connect Iola up to Eureka, and then Eureka over to Eldorado. That will increase the income by 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and it will cost $15 from the Yellow Railroad's treasury. Once again, Yellow has quite a bit of money at this point, although that does bring them down to 16 total money, and then they add 9 income to 3, that brings them up to 12. Unfortunately, still in last place. Not too surprising, though, considering they only have 3 cubes on the board. Okay, this means we can now take our turn, and... We do have four of these offer stock cards still. At the moment, we have more money than anybody else, and I suspect at least one of our opponents is planning on doing a dividend soon. Maybe we should get in on red. Yeah, let's give it a go. Let's offer up stock. As I said, we'll offer up red. There's just two remaining, and we will bid 10, and that's all of our money, and nobody else can outbid us. We technically could buy this for $9? Yeah, let's be greedy. We get that stock, and I'm feeling pretty good about it. Now, it is worth noting that the minimum value for that stock was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But again, I spent 9, so that was over the minimum to actually purchase the stock. All right, we are done, which means green can go. And I think they're feeling worried. They only have two stocks compared to the three of a couple opponents. They also have no money currently. So they are going to construct track with the only company they have that no one else is in. That is the Black Railroad. Of course, they have to start by discovering growth. That will be in 46. This is Eureka, F8. That is certainly going to make the blue player happy. This cube goes there, and that increases the income for yellow by two. So yellow is up to 14. And then green will construct with the Black Railroad. Now, the Black Railroad has $15 currently. And they are suspicious that a dividend might be coming soon. They're going to place both of these down, which spends all $15 from the Black Railroad's treasury. I am getting ahead of myself. They now place these cubes down. They're going to connect Marion to Newton and then Newton to Wichita. I do want to point out that there is supposed to be a circle on the map there connecting Newton to Wichita. That is going to be a big income increase. That's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So the Black Railroad jumps all the way to 29. Green is done, so yellow gets to go. They are going to construct track. So they begin by discovering growth. That was 64. That means Great Bend gets developed. However, it is already developed. So instead, Sedan gets developed at G8. G8 is here. That's great for the Red Company, which is also great for the yellow and blue players. The Red Railroad increases its income by two. That brings it up to 25. Now yellow constructs, and they are going to choose the Brown Railroad. That company only has $10, so they cannot do a $15 double cube lay. They'll spend the five, though, and then they'll connect Eldorado to Wichita. That's a pretty great connection. That increases the Brown Railroad's income by seven. This brings it up to 25. Well, it's now the blue player's turn, and they do have more money than the rest of us. We are all very cash poor at this point. And blue has decided now is the time to strike. They are going to offer stock. Now, they want to offer a black stock. The minimum price to successfully buy it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Because remember, it's the value divided by 5. And of course, the value is each of these cubes times 5. Now, the value is increased by 25 if that company has gone west. But we don't have to worry about that for now. So again, they have to pay a minimum of $7. And they have $8. So they are going to spend the 7 which is the minimum, saving $1. The $7 will go into the Black Railroad's treasury. That seems like a great deal for the best company on the board right now. Well, that finished a quick turn for them. And at this point, 
we all essentially can't buy any more stocks. I suppose the minimum value for yellow is three. So the yellow player could purchase a yellow stock if they wanted to on their turn. But we'll see what happens when it gets to them. For now, blue is done, which means we get to go. And with so little money out here, I know a dividend is coming soon. It might even be us. With that in mind, and with the fact that the Blue Railroad Company still has $30 in its treasury, I think we certainly want to construct a track right now to increase the dividend that must be coming soon. We start by discovering growth. That is 61. Liberal at G2 gets developed. G2 is here. Oh, that's interesting. It's essentially at a dead end. Well, this is going to incentivize people to head down there. And now let's construct two track with the Blue Railroad. We'll spend $15, which means it has $15 left in its treasury. And then let's build from Concordia over to Abilene and from Abilene over here to Selena. That will increase our income by two, four, six, seven, eight, nine. That's nice, but I am feeling a little jealous of not being able to get down there to Wichita. Either way, nine income is good. That brings blue up to 28. Well, it's now the green player's turn, and they are not happy about this, but they are going to play their one pay dividend card. They have zero money, the rest of us are really low, and they are worried that maybe they should have done this earlier. The rest of their opponents have been able to buy some very cheap shares because, generally speaking, we just don't have that much money. Paying dividends is going to put a bunch of money into the system, and yeah, they feel like they've already made a mistake waiting this long, but they're going to try to correct that now. Now, when a pay dividends card is played, either from hand or randomly from the top of the deck... Each player is paid out for the stocks that they have based off of the income for that company. Specifically, you divide the income of that company by five and then round up, and then every stock owned by players gains them that much money from the bank. We can start at the top, so that means the Black Railroad's income is 29. When you divide that by five and round up, that will pay out $6 per black share. Green has one and blue has one, so each of them gets $6. And then the blue railroad goes, it's at 28, that divided by 5 rounded up is 6 a share, and we're the only ones with blue railroad stock. So we get 6 plus 6, or $12, and then the brown railroad is at 25. That divided by 5 is exactly 5, so the yellow player gets $5, that's the only brown stock held. Next up, there is the red stock, which is also five per share. There is red up here with us, also with yellow and blue. So that is five for everybody but the green player. Now, the green player is definitely not going to make as much money as the rest of us are here. But again, they needed to do this so that the rest of their opponents would stop getting such cheap shares because we will now compete with each other with our increased money. Next up, there is yellow. That's at 14. Divided by five makes it $3 per share. Blue gets $3 from this. And finally, there is the Green Railroad at 14. That's going to pay out 3 a share. So 3 to the green player and 3 to yellow. All right, I consolidated the money. And from that dividend, we made $17. The green player only made 9 Yellow made $13. And blue made 14 So we were the big winner there. That was certainly great to see the green player do it. But again, at this point... $9 is the lowest amount of money that anybody has, so if anybody wants to buy a stock, they're going to have to pay at least $10 for it. And of course, we will potentially be competing with each other when that happens, because some of these stocks are very lucrative. That has finished the dividend, and that card is added into the used card pile, but I'm going to be putting it down here. It's effectively in the pile, but the reason for that is because the way this game ends is at the end of any player's turn, if all eight of the pay dividends cards have been played, or if at the start of a player's turn, they have no actions to perform because all of their cards are gone and all of the cards from this draw deck are gone, then in that moment the game ends and then we perform an end game special dividend. The way this works is we pay dividends for each company, but this is different from a regular dividend. You start by taking the income, then you add to that the value of the company, which is again $5 per cube on the board plus $25 if instead it is a go west cube. You add that value to the income, and then you divide that by the number of held stocks for that company. Unlike the dividends, where we always divide by five, now we are diluting on each other. So if there's a company that people don't believe in, a player could still get a bunch of money at the end of the game if they're not dividing that total amount that many times with their opponents, whereas some of the best companies might not pay out that well at the end because all of us are trying to get in on that company and we dilute on each other. Now, after that special dividend, the player with the most money is going to be the winner.
Now, once again, there are eight pay dividends cards in the game. Each of us started with one in our hand, and there are four shuffled up into this deck. We haven't seen any cards drawn from this yet, but again, that's not too surprising. We have a lot of variety in our hand, and I think what we're going to do as we move into the yellow player's turn is fast forward through a few turns. All right, we're going to slow down at this point. We've seen a lot more track lays. A few stocks were purchased, and we actually just used our pay dividend. So two out of the potential eight dividends have been paid out. It's now the green player's turn, and their hand of cards is starting to get pretty low. Because of that, they've decided they want to save some of the flexibility of knowing what they can do in these for later, and they're going to draw the first random card from the game. People could have definitely drawn randomly earlier, but at this point, it feels like people are now a little bit wary about holding on to things to guarantee later on. So they draw the top card, and it's offer stock. Now, when the offer stock comes from the draw deck, the current player has to offer a stock that still has the most stocks in its supply. If there's a tie, then the current player can choose, and there is a four-way tie with three green, yellow, brown, and black stocks out there. Brown is currently the best company. They are going to put a brown stock up for auction. Now, the green player has $21, which is the least out of everybody at this moment, and they're just going to say $21. That brown stock is worth a lot. Next up, yellow can go, they will say 22, then blue can go, and they'll say 23. Blue has $29 at this point, and we have 31, so we could certainly outbid that 23 if we want. Let's go for it. Let's spend our money. Let's just buy it for $29. That's what the blue player has. Maybe we're overpaying for it, but that's fine. <laughs> Of course, that $29 goes into the treasury for the brown company. We have five stocks, though. That feels pretty good, although we're not going to be buying another stock for a while, especially considering we've already used our pay dividends. So we are now at the whim of our opponents, or, of course, we can start drawing random to try and find more dividends out of that. Now, this was for the brown company, and the green player's turn is done. That means yellow is up, and let's see what they're going to do. They're going to go random as well. Maybe it's just that part of the game. Of course, when people go random, it's going to be different from one play group to the next. This card is Construct Track. Now, this has to happen for one of their companies, and they can only put one cube down because that came from the draw deck. They have to control the company, of course. They do not control blue because we have more than them. They do control red, green, and brown, though. The green company only has two stocks out right now, and it has money. Yeah, I think they're going to build with green. Because of this game from the top of the deck, they can only put one cube down. So that spends $5. And then they're going to try to break out. There's a lot of cubes over here. They're going to place from Abilene over to Beloit. That will increase the income by 3 plus 2 or 5. So green goes from 28 up to 33. And green has a lot more building options up here. Oops, I just realized I jumped the gun. We were supposed to discover growth first. That is 15. Oh, Beloit. Well... That has already been developed, so it would be at Jobu at E3 instead. We can see that's right here, and yeah, that would not have changed how the yellow player constructed. Moving on, the blue player can go. As you can see, our hands of cards are actually pretty light. And yeah, they're going to go random as well. There is another offer stock. That means they have to put up a black, yellow, or green stock. They already have a black and a yellow. They'd rather not dilute those anymore. Yeah, they're going to put up a green stock. The minimum bid for that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and they're going to bid 15. We have to pass, and now green is up. They will bid 21, all of their money. So it goes to yellow. They have $28, and I think they have their eyes on different stock. They're going to pass on that 21. This means blue is now up. They could easily pay the 22 needed to buy this, and I think they will. So $22 goes into the green railroad's treasury. They get that stock as well, and their turn is done. This means we can go, and let's take a quick look at our diminished hand of cards. We have three construct tracks left and three offer stocks left. Of course, as I said, we used our pay dividends card already. So we could play one of these, or we could start going random like everybody else seems to be doing suddenly. I think we'll construct track right now instead of going random. I'm sure we'll have to go random soon because obviously if we don't, we have five more turns of guaranteed actions before we have to see what's in the whim of that deck. So we'll construct. Developing first, that will be at 65. McPherson at D6. D6 is here. 
and the Black Railroad is connected to that. So that'll increase its income by one, which bumps it up to 34. Now we can build, and I figure we'll go with blue. That's still the company we are best at. There is $15 in the bank, but I think we'll only spend $5 of it to put a single blue cube down. This one will go here, increasing the Blue Railroad's income by three and one, so that's four more. Four brings it up to 40. So we're done, and green can go. They're going to draw random from the top. It's construct track. This can only be one cube, and they are going to spend $5 out of the green company's treasury to put a green cube down. They will put that one here, connecting Beloit up to Osborne. That will increase the income by three, four. All right, green is done, which means yellow can go. And they are going to offer stock. They're going to choose yellow. The minimum bid is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or at least the minimum amount to win this. Now they're just going to win it. They're going to buy it for 21. That's the amount of money the green player has. So they'll put 21 into the yellow treasury and take that stock. Well, they're done, so blue can go. And they've decided to draw a random card from the top. It's construct track. Now, again, this is a limited deck. At this point, it has 11 cards left in it. And as more people start drawing from this, it's probably going to deplete much faster. In this case, they are going to spend the last $5 from the green railroad's treasury to put one cube down. And they'll put it here. That's not a very good spot for income. It's between two diamonds. So that only increases its income twice. So they're done, and now we can go. And we should probably go random at this point. We only have two construct track and three offer stocks left. We probably don't want to offer stocks right now, so let's see what is here. Pay dividends. Okay, there's four of them in that deck. I think this is going to be good for us. So let's perform the dividend. We'll start with blue. 40 divided by 5 is 8 a share. So we are going to get 16. And then the yellow player is going to get 8. After that, we can see green is at 39. When you round that up, that is also five a share. So the green player gets eight, yellow gets eight, and the blue player gets eight. After that, brown is going to be eight a share when you round up from 39. So we will get eight, so will green, and so will yellow. Then yellow is at 35 divided by five, that is seven a share. So that's seven for us, the yellow player, and the blue player. Moving on to black, divide 34 by 5 and round up, that's 7 a share. So green gets 7, and so does blue. Finally, there is red at 25. Divide that by 5, that is $5 per share going to us, yellow and blue. After all that, we have $38. The green player has 44. Yellow has 43. And the green player has $40. That's also the third out of eight potential dividends in the game. And at this point, green can go. And I'm going to go ahead and fast forward again. And at this point, we're going to slow down. It is the green player's turn. And they are going to construct track from their hand. They only have three cards left in their hand. Although there's still a decent number of cards here in the draw deck. They, of course, start by discovering growth. They got a 5 and a 3. That is Smith Center, which is a 5 right over here. That does not help any of the railroad companies. Now, green is going to construct, and they will do it with black. They are the only player to control it because they have two black stock now. And with this construct action, for the first time in the game, they are going to do a western build. Now, you can only do this if that railroad company is already connected to one of the westernmost cities. In this case, the Black Railroad is connected to Tribune. You can also only do this if the W spot is empty, and each railroad can only build west once per game. Obviously, Black has not done this yet. So, they are going to build west by placing this here, and the first railroad to build west only has to spend $15 from their treasury. That goes directly into the supply and no income is applied. However, in this moment, a Black Railroad-only dividend happens. Before we move to that, though, I do want to mention that the next time any railroad builds west, they have to spend five more dollars than the previous. So essentially, it's $15 for the first, then 20, then 25, 30, etc., as more and more companies build west. 
Now again, the main reason to build west is to activate that dividend, which in this case only applies to the Black Railroad. The income is currently at 50. When you divide that by five, that is $10 paid out to each of the black stocks. That means green is going to get $20 for this, then yellow will get 10, and then the blue player will get 10. Everyone got money but us, but we have a pretty good portfolio over here. Now that has finished the green player's turn, and at this point it would be time for the yellow player to go. However, I am now going to stop playing through the game and instead do an example of what the end of the game would look like. Remember, the game ends at the end of a turn where eight of these dividends have been played. In this case, only three have happened, so almost half of them. The other way the game ends, if anybody starts their turn and they have no cards in their hand and there are no cards in the draw deck for them to draw into. In that case, the game ends, and in either of those, we then move on to a final dividend. Now, this one is special. We add the income to the value of the companies, and we divide that by the number of held stocks. And let's just pretend like the game is over in this current situation and see what all these payouts would be like again if the game happened to be over now. Now, again, we add the income to the value of the railroad, and the value is $5 per cube unless that cube has gone west and the Black Railroad has one of these. Now a Western build adds 25 to the value, so that's 25, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 cubes. That is 60 plus 25 plus 50, which is a total of 135, and then we divide 135 by the number of held stocks. So again, it's not divided by five naturally, unless all five of those stocks are held by the players. In this example case, that would be 135 divided by four, and when you round up, that's $34 for each of the shares. So that means the green player would get $68, yellow would get 34, and blue would get 34. Then we look to the blue company. It has 40 income and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 cubes out here. So that is $55 in value plus 40. This is 95 total. And then that's divided by only three shares. When you round up, that's $32 per share, almost as much as the Black Railroad, because, of course, there's one less share that's diluting it. So we'd get $62, and yellow would get $32. Moving on, the green and brown companies actually have the same payout. They're each at 39 income, and each of them have eight cubes on the board. So the total for each of those is 79, and looking out here, there are three held green shares and three held brown shares. So yeah, each of these companies will pay out the same exact amount per share. In this case, $27. So we'd get $27. The green player would get $27 for brown and $27 for green. Same goes for the yellow player, and then blue would get $27 for that green. The yellow railroad's at 35, and they have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 cubes out here. So that is 7 times 5, or 35, plus 35. So that is 70 divided by 3 which is 24 a share, so we would get 24, so would yellow, and so would blue. And finally, the red company has been a bit forgotten. It has an income of 25 and only five cubes on the board. So that is 25 plus 25, or 50, divided by three, which comes out to 17 a share, which we would get, the yellow player would get, and the blue player would get. Now, after we finish this end game special dividend that, of course, brings in those values and dilutes, the player with the most money will win the game. Now, once again, the game is far from over at this point. Only three out of the potential eight dividends have happened, and players still have a decent number of cards in their hand. I guess green only has three, but again, this draw deck has quite a few cards, so it's likely this game is probably a little over halfway done, maybe a little bit more. It really depends on the actions that all of the players take. Well, at this point, I've covered just about all of the rules to the game, so that means this tutorial is coming to an end. I hope you enjoyed learning how to play Prairie Railroads. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including these producer-level Patreon supporters. If you too would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.